Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Marvin Pendarvis, and I've had the privilege over the last two years representing uh, House District 113, which covers most of North Charleston, but it goes into Dorchester County and Latson and Lincolnville. And when I ran for office, uh, I ran on the principle that I wanted to connect communities and that every action and every step that I took, um, it was going to be because it was necessary and the people called for it, and that I would only do some things and roll up my sleeves if I had to. And I've observed over the last couple of years uh, the state of uh, South Carolina and when it comes to economic inequality. And so that's what I want to touch on a little bit. Um, everyone talks about chasing and having access to the American dream, right? And oftentimes we question or we wonder what that means. And for me, uh, access to quality education, uh, we all want that. Uh, we wanna make sure we've got decent and affordable housing. Uh, and more importantly, uh, when we get the first two right, we wanna make sure that we have the opportunity to climb the economic ladder. So in the form of upward mobility. And what I've observed, particularly in North Charleston where I grew up and live, is that that economic uh, inequality exists, and we've got to do something about it. Uh, it's something that I've been working on on the state level. Uh, now, many of you probably have heard about some federal legislation that was passed in the 2017 tax reform bill, and out of that came uh, this new uh, champion by Senator Cory Booker and Senator Tim Scott, Opportunity Zones. And what Opportunity Zones uh, were aimed to do is to invest in low-income, uh, sometimes minority communities to ensure that they have the opportunity uh, to grow and sustain themselves and to infuse in it a uh, number of money, uh, infuse in it opportunity uh, for people to be able to grow. And what I've done and what I've seen is there's a lot of questions about exactly how far that goes. Now, I'm not going to get into the nuances of the tax policy. Uh, safe to say that it essentially allows investors uh, to be able to invest their money in it and they get some capital gains if they hold it for uh, 10 years, some tax relief. Um, however, on the state level, I believe we can take it a step further. You see, I grew up in a neighborhood that was at one point uh, especially before my time, uh, my mom and, and so many of my uh, family members talk about it, that was thriving uh, on the south end of North Charleston. And over time, it was gentrified and has been gentrified, uh, displacement, uh, not only residential, but also business displacement. And so places and things that people would frequent are no longer there. And so the question we have to ask ourselves is, what are we doing to make sure these communities can continue to thrive and the people that come out of these communities have an opportunity to succeed? Because, that, because at the end of the day, if someone's struggling on the south end of North Charleston, that should matter to us if we live on the north end. And the way I look at it is if we work on solving a lot of our economic problems, uh, we address things like education. We address things like healthcare. We improve uh, the, the idea that people um, have an improved sense of self-esteem and want to make sure that they do everything that they can to have a meaningful mark on this society. And so what I've done is I've taken a look at a number of states um, that have used the opportunity zones and used it to supercharge them in a way. And one particular example that I am championing here in South Carolina, and I encourage you all to call uh, your legislators to tell them to champion it too, is uh, Maryland and how they've looked at opportunity zones and they've invested in it. And so what they've done, and one of the things that I would like to see South Carolina do, is in addition to the federal gains, uh, the federal benefits that many of these investors are going to get, on the state level, we've got 135 opportunity zones that have been designated by the governor. They exist. Many of them lie within low-income communities. And what we can do is, if we want to be able to give tax incentives to people that come into these communities that build, but more importantly, there's some kind of community benefits agreement. Because if you know about what's happened with the opportunity zones, most people feel like it's the fast track to gentrification. 
And so it's going to continue to displace and accelerate the displacement of so many of the communities that we have seen uh, come victim to that over the years. And what my proposal does is it says, you know what, if you're going to go into this community, Mr. Investor, you need to talk to the people who live there. You need to work with the residents who work there and find out a way, a comprehensive way for you to be able to find out solutions that are mutually beneficial. And so that's the idea. It's one that when it was introduced in the House, it's gotten some bipartisan support. And I'm looking forward to my colleagues joining me on board. I've already spoken to the governor's office, and they've taken some interest in it because at the end of the day, it's an issue that transcends partisan politics. Uh, as I said before, we all want to be able to have a quality of life that allows us to live. Uh, but the reality is, especially in so many of our low-income and distressed communities, uh, that quality of life doesn't exist. And so as much as it seems like it's in distance, it's really not. And it, it's far reaching. And we've got to do something to stand in the gap to ensure that everyone has the opportunity uh, to succeed. And so I would encourage you all as you look um, into the legislation uh, to continue uh, to talk with your legislators, uh, to call them and find out exactly how you can be involved. Uh, many people ask, how can I be involved? What can I do? Show up to subcommittee meetings. In, in, in the House of Representatives, everyone can come and testify at a subcommittee hearing. And this is important legislation that I think is going to really have a benefit on our community here in the Charleston area, but more importantly in the state as a whole. Uh, we've done some good things when it comes to economic development, but the reality is we still have more work to do because we continue to have communities that are distressed. We still have people in communities that are looking for opportunity, but that opportunity continues to ex escape from them. And so as long as I'm in office, um, I'm going to be an advocate for that. Uh, that's what I wanted to talk with you about today. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to do so, and I look forward to doing everything that I can to push you. Thank you.